I was on staff at Alexandria Presbyterian for 20 years and we worked with a lot of refugees and asylum seekers and I began to notice how challenging it was for people who were new to the U.S. to really connect in worship, uh, that discipleship was more difficult unless we did it in their heart language. And so I began wondering what would it be like if we created a church that would be more welcoming to people who were new to the neighborhood, new to the United States. We wanted to start a church that from the beginning represented uh, the preferences and the needs of the fullness of the community. And that's why from the beginning we had a leadership team of couples that are from Togo, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Egypt, Pakistan, Iran, Korea, um, and Uyghurs from Northwest China. And that way, the decisions about how we do church are being made collectively by the people who represent the, the community that we're trying to reach. When I think of uh, One Voice Fellowship, I think it's a loving community um, where we come and love one another. And sometimes it's really difficult because we're from all different countries, we have different backgrounds and language, but it requires love to understand each other and it ultimately praise God with one voice in love that God has shown us. Right now in our congregation, we have about 60 or 70 people coming each Sunday, typically from 15, 16 different countries. We did some research and found out about a software platform developed by an Indonesian Christian software developer um, that allows us to translate the manuscript of the sermon in advance. And so we translate it into 15 languages and then it's edited by human editors. And so we deliver the sermon sentence by sentence in 15 languages simultaneously. And so then as I'm preaching, I click through my sermon one sentence at a time. And when I click on the sentence that I'm reading in English, it sends that same sentence out to Kindle Fire Tablets and they can read that sentence in their own language, 15 different languages. For me, it's like a beautiful picture that where we really enjoy to adore God in different ways, because you can see how uh, the African uh, brother and sister adore God. It's beautiful. How uh, the Latinos also, especially I really love uh, African style because they dance, they <laughs> sing very, very, uh, loud. Loud. So we really enjoy it. We are so happy to be part of One Voice. So as a worship leader, um, I look for the songs that are, um, first of all, in um, different languages and definitely uh, in different genre of music. And I sometimes have to learn the languages that I've never heard of because we want to sing that in One Voice Fellowship. The music that we're playing tonight, um, the two songs are from Africa, so which has very particular rhythm. And it makes us move, makes us dance, and even sometimes you don't understand the meaning, um, we explain what it means. Sometimes it's very simple as God is holy, He is great, and we try to um, dance with the music. I haven't played any like um, African songs, but the beat is like African beat. So I just uh, listened to the YouTube and then I learned some rhythms. Every Sunday we do small groups for all ages from 4 to 5 p.m and then we do dinner from five to six, and then we have worship at six. And it's important that we have dinner every week because when people break bread together, um, they build relationships, they build community. And one of the things I love about dinner is we have uh, different teams that bring dinner each week. And so there's always this wonderful surprise about what food you're gonna have. So one week there's gonna be spicy Pakistani chicken next to Salvadoran pupusas, next to lasagna, you know, next to 
a watermelon. And it's just this amazing mixture um, where the food represents all the different cultures that God's brought here. The church is such an incredible picture of heaven here on earth and the body of Christ. Today we're outside because we're at a picnic and it's a federal holiday. Most of our families don't have any family in the U.S. And so we've seen just naturally as relationships are built, all of our members are saying, this is my family. And so we celebrate birthdays together. We celebrate graduations together. Baby showers. Baby showers. And today we're celebrating Memorial Day with a big picnic. And most of our people wouldn't have anywhere else to go. We have one daughter, she is going to turn five. And you know, growing up, uh, you know, with different uh, people, like she has friends from El Salvador, she has friends from America, she has friends from Africa. And growing together, it's, you know, it's really helpful. We felt a little bit racism here, and we don't want our daughter to, you know, learn about it, you know, feel the same thing which we learned. So our kids that are growing up in this church, many of them are one, two, three, seven, and their friend group at church is five or six different nations coming together, playing together. And one of the beautiful things we see about that is their schools are very multinational. And it's really a blessing to have a church that matches the multi-ethnicity of their school. And so their worship community can mirror what they're seeing in our local community. One voice means everything that uh, you can expect about uh, a, a spiritual growing church. I would say that it means us coming and worshiping uh, one God in uh, multiple different languages. Uh, that's what it means, that I can express my faith with that, uh, with that fear of my expression, with that uh, thinking that I will be judged based on uh, uh, how I speak, or uh, based on uh, how I express myself. I would say that one voice is a picture of what heavens will look like. I was a Christian when I was in China, in a secret way in, in our country because of the Chinese government against and the Christianity and against as a Muslim, so it's so difficult and for, for and living in a Christian faith. And in America, it's very, very good, and we have a church and one voice, and a very good and wonderful church, and multiple nations, and multiple people there, and fantastic and very exciting. Is I'm really happy and one of member of this church. We stand up and we say Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. But there's a lot of people still who believe that Christianity is a white man's religion, that it's a Western religion, that it's not for the entire world. And so we're trying to um, demonstrate by the way we pray, the music we sing, the translations we provide, that Jesus really is Lamb of God of the entire world. Thank you.